point that Philip is making is, is that we had an MS plan, but it had no detail. And the point that I'm trying to make is, is you're put, putting some incisiveness on the fact that we have a two-step, depending on how you count, maybe a three-step process. And the special use permit classification, and you just talked about it, it went from farming to something. And it's that special use permit that's not really well understood by many people in the city, and many cities don't use the special use permit step to get where they want to go. But we got that, that's what we're stuck with. And I think the point you made about nobody getting a special use permit is a valid point, and that it ought to apply across the board. We would be careful not anybody that's in the zoning process now, where they're seeking a permit for a building, they're seeking a land use change of any sort, those people get to go forward. So we're drawing a line, and I propose that the line be one October or some date in the future. And we started from that date to go forward. We give PNG somewhat of an arbitrary 12 month deadline or some kind of a deadline that we all know we crafted that period. And we say that the special use permit classification and any changes to that are the subject of our plan. And I think the point you make is very well taken. Uh, we didn't discuss the benefits, but one of the things that came out of the last discussion was when you take land and go directly from farm or ag to some other use, you're going to have a rollback tax to pay. It changes its classification and becomes much more productive for tax purposes on, on the real estate for the city. Uh, there are lots of reasons we ought to do this right. So I'd like to say that we agree with something that you suggested, Jim. Thank you, Luke. And uh, I would make the suggestion to the council that you adopt this with these parameters if these gentlemen and Mr. Chairman, you need to <coughs> and see if we can come together on this. Um, we're talking about a 12-month period, if we can agree on that. I think it was 18 months. Um, yeah, I was actually going to ask that. Okay. You wanted 18 months? Mr. Luke, don't let hinder our ability to grow in 12 months. I'll answer that if I can just get my figures down here that we're recommending. Okay, so you at least have a recommendation to put it on. You think 12 months sufficient? For you I don't think it is. It probably needs to be 18 months of recommending. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't happen quickly. It takes a long time to hold all the public meetings, do the studies, and right. all that. Um, and, and I did put on the, my bill that says a maximum of 18 months. Well, and the reason I want an agreement on this is we're going to try to put a cap on it. Okay, so it's 18 months. Okay. So we're going to say a recommendation for 18 months to the council with this little group and the manager I think is on board with this. Uh, the second would be special use permits that applies across the board, any special use permit request. And that would cover anything that has to be a change that's presently not covered under the present zone. I have a question on that. Yes, sir. On the legality of it. The B and Z voted as a board <coughs> To bring a recommendation of 18 months for my woman's credit parks. I don't know if I have proposed it as a total block on all permits, whether it would have passed the BNZ law. Well, we're before the big boy. Okay. And and if we can do that, then I support it 100%. And, and, we, and we, that's what I wanted to originally. Okay. And we can do it. I did some, I did some homework for this. Uh, there's a Supreme Court case of 2004. Uh, I'll give this to you, Mr. Council, for the press. Uh, Sheffield versus uh, the city of Glen Heights. And there is specific Texas statutory language that talks about the Vested Rights Act. And the reason the Vested Rights Act, where's David? David, the Vested Rights Act doesn't apply when you're in this nebulous term of special, special use. There's been no determination made at that point about what the use is. So what you're trying to do is while we're in the nebulous special use classification, we're then trying to figure out how we're going to specify what happens in those areas. Sure. And the Supreme Court says that for that purpose, for a limited period of time, and so you can do proper planning, this is recognized so long as you don't impact anybody that's got an existing permit or an existing land.
change in it that's been previously approved. Do you hear me, David, sir? I hear that. Okay. So we're really only trying to talk about those unclassified special use areas that were previously ag or some other unspecified use. So we designed those for what we want them to be. Commercial. Commercial or some variation thereof. When you say unclassified, what, what do you mean? Well, special use right now is a, is a nebulous, undefined term. And so what we're doing, for example, in all these mobile homes <coughs> or RV parks, is we have a two-step process where we ask for special use permit, and then we say we want to flip it into RV or mobile home or whatever other classification it is. And because we've used that process and those lands are not presently classified, there's no vested right impact. And we don't have a lot of that area. If you look at the map in there, the black and white map in there, or if you look at MNS's plan, we really don't have a lot of space in the city that's not, that's available, I would say. So I don't think we can do anything but uphill good things by trying to figure out what we're going to do with those areas. And then we'll make your life a lot, make your life a lot easier. Well, it will be in a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, there may be more questions that I need to answer, but my, my recommendation of those three points, Jim, did I get them? Yes, sir. After all that discussion, what is your recommendation? The recommendation is for a moratorium on all special use permits for a maximum of 18 months to give the PNC time to develop the meeting and future growth plan. As stated in the city's master plan. Do we have any uh, idea of estimated cost to develop the plan based on other studies? Estimate um, around $15,000. Any uh, discussion, Council? The recommendation from the PNZ is as stated on the agenda. That's changed slightly from the agenda. I'm sorry? Change from the agenda. So it says it's going to be all applications. It's going to be all special use permits. But the 18 months. I did want to specify a maximum. I think you can get this done in about 11 months. Okay. Regarding all applications, what about most of those? Is that included in that? I'm sure that affects anything other than RVs, cabins, uh, mobile homes, issues like that that require. Uh, Motels do not require a special use permit. Council is not going to stop for business. Thank you. Thank you for taking on that initiative, uh, Robert, Mr. Whitecock. Is there a motion? Yes. I move to recommend a moratorium for a maximum of 18 months on all special use permits within the city limits and the extraterritorial jurisdiction to allow the PNC Commission to develop a comprehensive growth plan for the city of Florida. We need to add an effective date. Well, to approve a special use permit. Uh, I recommend a, a moratorium, I'm sorry, of 18 months, no manufacturing, I'm sorry, of all special use permits for a maximum of 18 months. Effective October 1. Effective October 1. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Next item. Consideration action approved FEC resolution to permit a local agreement with respect to a recreation complex with the city of Florida and state of Florida like EDC. Is responsible for the construction, the enhancement, and expansion of parks, facilities, and for the benefit of the community. Yeah. Any discussion, Council? Any citizens' input? Can you address uh, the interlocal agreement? Yes, everybody should have a copy of the project copy of the ball zone. The EDC has approved the interlocal agreement. Uh, <coughs> Just for everyone's sake, this has nothing to do with finance. The local agreement is basically saying the EDC will, will build the park, uh, finance it, 
without any city, city obligations for construction, and the city will then maintain it. That's the basics of the local agreement. Mr. Mayor, when this was first and put the up... the EDC board voted 6 to 0 unanimously. Did you have a comment? I have just a question. When this was first put on the agenda and it got tabled, it said that the city manager was going to prepare a budget and cost for the operation and maintenance of it, that this was going to be part of that interlocal agreement. Uh, so that the city knew what the costs were to operate and maintain this now recreation complex. Uh, suddenly that's missing from this agenda, I, and I'd like to hear some clarification on that. Any further comments? Yes, ma'am. May or may not go along with what he just mentioned, but you. Good for board. I'm already knowledgeable. Sorry, ma'am. Mr. Good Girl, Carol. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question as to I've asked in the past to just kind of also have a plan of to see some type of architectural design or what it would encompass, right. our plans for upkeep, how that will be maintained, what we are building who's going to have use of it, who will be directing it, and so forth. And, and maybe you already have that, and somehow I've missed it. But but actually, that's part of the where that I is would find it. Yeah, go ahead. I just where I would find that. On item C of the local agreement, it says the FPDC shall be jointly responsible for reviewing submitted designs and plans for aesthetic and practical considerations. I'm sorry, which one are you on? Item C on the local agreement. It was we don't have that. that. It's part of the agreement. Okay, so if I go to the interval agreement and I look at, ask for that, it will be on the specific link as to what it looks like, the drawings, no, the this is, no, this is saying the EDC and the city will work together on, on what it's going to look like, uh, construction, so forth. Uh, this doesn't say who's the designer, it doesn't say uh, how many fields, it doesn't say anything like that. All it says when it's built, we're going to work together on, on the... Okay, so definitely we're going forward with it, but we don't have that yet in place. Is that right? That's correct. Thank you. Very much. Can we get a copy of that interlocal agreement today? If it's approved, yes, ma'am. And this kind of sad that Margaret brings the, interval, the agreement here where I haven't even read it. And uh, again, again, I keep saying about a packet. All week, no packet again. But you know... Uh, Mr. Mayor, I wanted to ask uh, who uh, made the special meeting, you and who else, or who was the other councilman that you need two to make a special meeting? Yeah. This is a special meeting, and to call a special meeting, we need two councilmen or two. Uh, who's the other person that called for the meeting? I think we decided that uh, Thursday that we uh, talked about. I don't know. To call a special meeting, we need two. Who called it? So, so we have a special meeting with, with sorry, you. Well, but when we posted this agenda, there has to be two councilmen to post this agenda. Right. <coughs> Who's the other councilman? Yeah. Well, you with can do it, but who else is with you to call this meeting? And sir, this particular Yes, this particular agenda. Well, you can put my name on it. Okay, but there was never one, right? There's got to be a signature to call a meeting. According to the charter, it takes two. Now all of a sudden we find the other person today. Now you're calling it because you feel like calling it. Yeah. You know, it should have been by the books. Thursday, Thursday we had a meeting, a regular meeting. And then and then they called a the Saturday one. Who called the Saturday one? That's what I'm asking. What does this have to do with the Oh, they called the charter. They called I wanna know who put this on the agenda. We've had to have have had special meetings because you have publicly said that you're not coming to any meetings. Yes, sir, I have. So for the purpose of getting uh, some let me tell you. information done, but this has nothing to do with the No, no, it has to do, according to the charter, we need two councilmen or, or you and another councilman to call a special meeting for Saturday. Who is the other councilman? I don't, I'm telling you, because of your absence and that you have publicly said no. you're not going to come to No, 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 no. I've, been here, I've been here to two regular meetings this month. I've been to, uh, you can go on the record, and not only I, why do you always public, publicly say to the people that I have missed? Everybody has missed, okay? Yes. It's, it's, Everybody has missed. As the what, what, was said, your, what was your form Thursday meeting at 10 in the morning? 
But I'm just asking a simple question. Can I get an answer? Ms. Casillo just answered that for you. For today, she, she, she just, today she said she did it. Right? right. I'm on record. We, we need to post, to post an agenda, we need two persons. We did not have it according to right now. Then none of this is legal. It shouldn't no, be. It's it's not should be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It, it shouldn't be, but anyway, let me just say. Did you say something? Excuse me? Did you say something? Not this time, but I'm out of curiosity. No, no. Did you ask? Yes, thank Why you. wasn't all this on Thursday's regular meeting? Why did it have to be on a separate meeting? On a Saturday. You had a quorum on Thursday. No, he calls meetings at one, like he said, and I've been here at 10 in the morning, twice. I've been here, you know, but regardless, I was just asking a simple question to go on record because this, this, this uh, meeting here is not legit. Okay. Because behind, when I get a copy, it should say the two councilmen that are back here in the back. But anyways, my, my thing of coming here is I'm not against, and I want to make it clear to everybody, I'm not against the fixing these parts. But I'm gonna get to this sports complex. Now, let me talk. You talk, like I said, huh? Okay, but this is not about no, the sports no. complex. It, no, sure it is, sure it is. Right here at the parentheses. <coughs> what does it say? Can you read it? The okay. recreational complex. Is that a new name that you put out there? Okay. Do you think that this is regarding finance in the park? Do you think that's a complex? Like I said, Mr. Mayor, this, is a, this, this meeting here is not legit. Okay, but anyways, I came here. I came here to, to tell the. I came back because I'm not going to be your corner past the sports complex. That's why I came back. Can we get and now I'm here to make the voice of the people. Can we no, have you stop me. I'm here. I'm a councilman to respond. We're going to move on. Is there any other further action? No, no. We're not going to move on. We're here. I want to make it clear to the people of Floresville that I'm willing to fix the drainage problem, the fields, whatever it takes. And all I want to do is gather all these people with sports, walkouts, soccer, baseball, Whoever, and have a workshop all together. What is it that you need, Walcats? What is it? That, and then come together as a city. We've done that. We've done we have not done it. Where have, where, what was my invitation at that? And we've done it. We didn't do it. The council, we have, we have no, no, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. And like I say, he had six years to do this sports complex. Now, all of a sudden, a month before he leaves on special meetings, want to put it to the people. All I'm here to do is. To table this until we talk to it, then I talk to her. There's, there's a motion to table. I'm making a motion to table it, and let's talk to all these groups, and then we'll see what happens. Okay. I'll make a motion. I knew it would die, but uh, at least, at least, I'm including the people. And people are asking me, what's the problem? Well, let me ask you this. Is there any other questions? Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Mayor. 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 Yes, Mr.
Thank you, buddy. Okay, consideration and action regarding quarry ground lease with the city of Floresville. Yes. Yes, it is. How is that? We asked Mr. And Rosenberg. We asked Mr. Rosenberg to give us his opinion. Mr. Rosenberg, you gonna come out and answer the question? Mr. Garza, sit down, please. Sit down, sir. Oh, no problem. Well, you ought to come out and say something. We we want to ask a question of the attorney. Is this a legal meeting or not? Please, Mr. Rosenberg. Consideration and action regarding four eight wow. with the city of Florida. I'd like to know why he not come in and answer the question, please. Because it's not. Why wouldn't he answer the question? Mr. Rosenberg, please answer the question. It's a legal meeting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It took that long? <laughs> On the 4A, uh, you know, let me say something. We're talking about about four Little League baseball fields. That's it. And the purpose of it is because of the the population has tripled since 1983. If you go out during the baseball season or football season or soccer season, you'll see temporary fields set up. Temporary fields for what, these orange construction fences being the outfields. That cinder block restroom, full of urine for 30 years. And it's not something we can just, oh, it's gonna get cleaned every year. No, some of those things need to be torn down and restarted. And they say, oh, two point, we made a notice of a lot of money. When you consider one baseball field, one baseball field, a 225 field, with irrigation and lights, about $250,000. Mr. Garza was here at one of our Saturday morning meetings, and he told us that those fields should be condemned. He himself said that. Peter Chahaz has said the same thing. He said, on those sinkholes, he said an F-150 could fit in one of those sinkholes. I'm sorry, but I do support this project. I have faced the uh, many oppositions from the day one that I, I started here as mayor. Okay? I see what, the, what Floresville can do, I see the potential, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to say no to some Little League fields. I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that. We have not neglected it for, for four years, Grace. We have not. It wasn't me. Well, whoever said it. This has been part of our master plan for six years. Uh, Andy can confirm, this has been part of our plan for six years. Andy, have the quorum, go on. Yeah. We, oh, we are going to go on. But this has been part of our master plan for six years already. Six years. And yes, we have been taking care of the water. We have been taking care of the streets. We have been taking care of the sewer. In 2014, a new sewer plant will be built. The same people who are opposing here today on the Lily Field, we're opposing financing for the, the sewer plant. I'm sorry, but there's things that we need to move flow, uh, flow and move forward. Technology here at the, at the City Hall. Can you imagine? Our, our email was dated 1983. I mean, our internet was from 1983. We're moving floors go forward. And this is the plan that we have. We need internet for the whole not just City Hall. We can okay, Ms. Richardson, the whole okay. Town. Do you know there's some things that maybe you don't know? You hear the propaganda out there, but these these are the facts. We presented a plan for Time Warner right here in this room. David, you can confirm that. When we talked about the prices, there was an uproar. Nobody wanted Time Warner. Wasn't it, it six hundred and something a month? Something That was for the businesses, yeah. Ms. Garza. Okay, that was for the businesses. First, first the businesses, then the residents. But we couldn't even bring that because there was so much uproar. I'm sorry, but we're going to move Floresville forward. Now, cutting the tax rate, that's not the best interest of Floresville. Like I said earlier, when we're, we're talking about saving $2 a year, $2 a year, and then we'll maybe have to cut a police officer or cut, you know, whatever we have to cut, and Andy has to make that decision, not us. Is it worth the 20 cents that we're saving a month? We hear all kinds of criticism. Why? Because we're moving floors move forward. And the internet that we're talking about, Ms. Richardson, first, when I first got elected, that, that's our priority. We had the president of Horizon here in Floresville. They did an assessment. 
There was not enough heads here in Florida, even enough rooftops to accommodate bring in Verizon DSL. I work for AT&T, AT &T. we have had AT&T here, but the PUC has this area, okay? Uh, Verizon has this area, that's already made by the PUC. We, we are serviced, in a, we're in an island, everybody around us is AT&T. We have Verizon, okay? Verizon did not want to invest at that time on the infrastructure. Maybe at some time in the future it will happen, or maybe the PUC will say, hey, you can go to another provider. But those are the parameters we work with. But there's multiple uses of uh, high, Wi Fi and, and satellite companies here in Florida. It, it might not be the infrastructure that we want or that other companies want to invest in Florida, but it's here. And how can we be against Little League Fields? Getting back to the topic, how can we be against Little League Fields? Yes, it is about Little League Fields. Because people are saying this word sports complex and they're thinking about this big Astrodome or Alamo Dome. We're talking about, about four baseball fields, four Little League fields. That's not going to cost you a penny. A penny. Regardless of the propaganda that you hear out there, it's not going to cost a penny. But it's not costing our own opinions. I'm sorry? We're forming our own opinions. Oh, good. We don't listen to propaganda. Okay, then. We listen to. Okay, but, but it's not an a, a opinion, this is a fact. It's not costing the taxpayers not a single penny. Not a single penny. That's a fact, that's not an opinion. That's a fact. Yes, sir, it is. The FEDC is funded by sales, sales tax. Right. That's a tax that I pay. Yes, I just said property tax, Jim. Okay, I pay a property tax, too. That's right. Yeah. Okay, do you think your sales tax is gonna go up? No, what I'm okay. saying is that we keep trying to give people who can. Yes, go ahead, Here you go. Before we get this thing into being a really emotional argument, right. we really got out and of And I hand. trust your judgment. And we really got out of hand in this city. We've had accusations. Exactly. We've got all kinds of stuff going on in this world that's gotten away from business. Right. The bottom line here is that we've got legal issues that have cost the city thousands of dollars, it cost counsel. And, and think about, what's the root of all that, Jim? And we've got the FEC board is in trouble. If we had put this thing on a ballot and let it go to the voters, then this would not have happened. Okay. Okay, let me answer that, Jim. The petition that was being passed around, first of all, it was full of public propaganda. It was saying our property taxes were going to go up, and it was that our sales tax were going to go up. And let me say, the certificate of obligation, just that word itself, certificate of obligation, was obligating our property taxes. Yeah. It was obligating our property taxes. Yeah. The word if, obviously you hear that word if. If this happens, if this happens. Well, in that case, if this happens, the city wouldn't be, be responsible. Okay? The way, the way it's being financed now, there is not a penny of property taxes being fine, uh, obligated. Not a penny. Not a penny, but let's, let's not, go and talk about some other things financially. Right. First of all, let's go back to that issue. I signed the petition. I didn't sign it because I was against the, the contract. So I don't know who signed the petition. I, I signed it. it well, I'll tell you, I did. But I signed it simply because I felt like it was a controversial enough issue that we needed more information. The voters right. wanted to address it, and I thought the ballot would be a great place to go to have a first point to get time for information to come out. Financially, and I will say that I am not the, the best educated person on what goes on with city finances. The decision making that I do, uh, I've gone to the state comptroller site and I've looked at the budgets over the last several years. They show the FEC has operated at a deficit for the last five. Uh, and I don't know where the extra money comes okay. from to fund that. There's not a deficit on FEC. What it's showing is the their obligations are, ex are extended for 30 years. Okay? But I think what the, the website you're showing is a max the total amount due. Okay, it shows total revenue and total expenditures and for right. five years it shows a deficit. But trust me, you know, when we make decisions up here, everybody was asking for legal advice or, or, or engineers or CPAs. We rely on our experts to help us make these decisions. Our financial advisor said, has said that FEDC is, has, is well financially. They're, we're not going to get into an obligation that we cannot afford. Okay, but let's take other things that are going on. Mm -hmm. The FEDC currently is uh, some contract performance issues with the county over the, the business park. Mm -hmm. uh, if my information is correct, the FEC had to sell land to pay off what they had promised to the Mom, school district. Okay, uh, okay. You know, Aww. where are they getting the money? 
Uh, that, that's absolutely not true, Jim. We did not have to sell any land to pay any, up, out to any type of obligation to the school. That's absolutely okay. not true. I will accept that. I agree with you, too. If I go on and I move over to the uh, event center, which is also a, a different corporation, mm -hmm. it's operated in a deficit based on a comptroller site for the last three years. We actually made money last year, Jim. About 50, not very much, about $57,000. Correct. And, 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 uh, and, and the debt service on that particular facility in a couple of years is going to go up significantly beyond what it is today. Going on. Okay, let me address that. Okay. Okay. The, the event center, when it was first built, we were expecting revenues at that time. When we started the project, I guess now it's been four years, the economy was a little bit different than what it was now. Okay? We have to realize that the economy on national level was different. We were expecting revenues to be in the neighborhood about 300000 We didn't reach that. So we refinanced the note to make our payments slower. And you would have done the same thing with your home or your business or anything else. So we brought the payments down to about $100,000 a year. Well, actually, exactly $100,000 a year. With the, with the intent that it had to be refinanced at a certain time. And I think that's coming up in 2014 or 2015. So if you're seeing a, a payment there of $1.5 million, which is like I see in the, in the blogs there, I mean, that it's going to be $1.5 million. No, it's not going to be $1.5 million. The idea that it has to be redone again. It has to be redone. And that's not something that cities is at fault for. It was just the national economy. But as you can see, the local economy that it is right now, and the chambers here, uh, Philip is uh, the chamber uh, president, you'll see the economy is doing very, very well. Our sales tax are going up, I believe, what is it, Philip, uh, 40, 50 percent over last year? Yeah. It's, it's doing very, very well. You know, so I think right now is the time to invest in our infrastructure, the time to invest in our water and our sewer, our parks. You know. The money, the, we feel that the economy is going to continue to grow. All the analysts, all the economic, economic analysts show that Florida is, is a prime city. Wilson County, there was a survey done that Wilson County, one of the richest counties in the state of Texas in, in, in 10 years. And I, I, I firmly believe that. We see the activity happen here. We don't always, you know, the propaganda that we, we see happening out there, I, I'm sorry, it's just a lot of propaganda. And most of the times, it's initiated by by one or two individuals, Jim. Well, yeah, and I don't disagree with that. I, you. Know, I, I, I respect every, anything you tell me, and if we can discuss that, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. I respect you. Two other quick things, and I'll sit down again. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, uh, looking at city budget uh, that was proposed for 2012 2013, mm -hmm. expenditures exceed revenue, uh, it gets in the black by transfer of funds. That's not a complaint, just simply an observation. I look at the capital plan, I see that there's an unfunded $60,000 uh, dispatch system, I see there's an unfunded uh, uh, fire truck, uh, but then I see the... Okay, exactly. Then I, then I see the sewer system. Yep. Okay, what I see is $2.3 million in a sewer system that's supposed to be funded by a USDA grant, and my question is, what probability do we have of that grant being given to us. Okay. We'll address that in a second. Okay. But let me say that. Let me address that, Jim. You're talking about all these things that need to be addressed. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Our, our budget, I mean, our, our sales tax rate, our tax rate is very, very low. Our budget is super tight. There's not much room for wiggle. Somebody brought up the other day, well, where's the uh, money for the sewer plant? Where's the money for this? Well, if you keep on cutting our tax rate, you know, you're eliminating some of the services that we're, we're wanting to provide. We have a very small budget. We have a very tight budget. So there isn't a lot of money to go buy everything cash. We've been talking about a, a, lot of, a ladder truck because of the three story buildings in, in Florida now. We've been talking about the, the sewer plant, but that's in 2014. There may be a tax increase needed. There may be. And I, I supported it this year, and I supported it last year. Because there, we continue having the same amount of income, yes, more income because the appraisals are going up, but we're not getting a whole lot of revenue based on the people that are coming in into Florida. Yeah, my, my, my final point here is yes. that all I'm asking of you is that at least all the stuff that I can see published, we're in a deficit situation, and if you would just consider the financial situation, <coughs> Yes. Thank you.
I hope I, you know, made some clarification, provide some clarification on the Little League field. You know, we use the word sports complex, that's the way it was presented in the ballot in 1996. But I think that scares a lot of people when we say sports complex. But we're talking about about four Little League fields and maybe uh, one soccer field. Whatever the budget allows, uh, whatever the EDC approved, then we work backwards. This is what we can afford. But the grandiose sports arena, professional baseball team, whatever that we've heard, absolutely is not true. Absolutely is not true. <coughs> Mr. Robles, you have a comment? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Why a recreation sports practice? Why? Okay, let me say again, Mr. Robles, I'll respect everything you can say here, but the population has tripled since 1983. When you go out there and see the kids in the summer and the spring playing baseball, you're talking about temporary fields, we're talking about a, rest, a cinder block restroom that is, needs to be demolished, uh, pavilions that need to be upgraded, uh, painted, swimming pool that probably needs some repairs. My question is, why now? Why now? It's been talked about for six years. Yes, but why now? It's been why, talked about. But it's, why now? Why? I, I don't understand your question. Why? We've been talking about this for six years. I understand. But why now? Why could it been three years ago? Yeah. Why not six why years now? ago? Why now? I mean, who, who made a comment? Why not six years ago? It has been discussed for six years. Not Would you like to provide proof to you? No, I've been here. I've yeah. seen it. And the only reason. Yeah, it's been just talked about for six years. Okay. Answer, and the only reason I'm, I'm saying this, Mayor, because we do, I understand, we do have kids that need to play sports, but they have some activities in school that they can do for right now, but we need to work on the other uh, side of the house, the, the, the basic stuff that we need to get the kind of okay. Mr. Robles, but those things are being addressed. That's where the propaganda starts. They're saying we're, we're doing this and not taking care of this. That's not, that's not true. That is absolutely not true. The only reason that we don't want to build a sports complex is simply we don't want to build it. Because we're addressing the water needs, we're addressing the street needs, we're addressing the sewer needs, we're addressing the police protection, we're addressing fire protection. I mean, I Those are being addressed as we speak. I grew up playing baseball, football, and the stickers, and my little head, and you know, and, and, and I still survive. <laughs> yeah. So you're suggesting that we go to where to play ball? Where, where do you suggest? I suggest that maybe we need to get sitting together as a city and, and, and get a uh, get the community together and, and just do something temporary for the kids until we can get all everything uh, done. Okay. The, the streets, the sewer plant or the water waste plant, and, and then we can go and work with the kids. Well, like I said, one field is about two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. I already I'll, I'll point you as chairman of the committee to raise two hundred fifty thousand for one field. I make these promises, but I'm sure I'm sure that, that Jesse works for, for a big corporation that probably can, and, and you know what's cool that's, that's exactly what we plan to do. That's exactly what we plan to do. That once we have a commitment, well, let's go look for those corporate sponsors. Let's go do that. I, I plan to do that. So we can help the FEDC make that payment. But I just don't understand why the complex has to be done. Okay, let's call it Lily Fields. Okay. okay. Well, you it. But why now? That's my question. Why do we want to be hanging off a group a, a thread instead of a rope? You know? okay, I don't understand. We've been talking about it for six years. It's not not just now. It's been discussed for six years. Right. We've been discussing it for six years, Mr. Mayor, but we haven't set a dime aside for it. We've been discussing our streets. We've got the sales tax. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a timeline. We've got priorities. We're pursuing a USDA loan. We have nothing in our budget to pay this loan. When we look at this MS Engineering Master Plan, many of those facts have been brought up, and we've asked for these questions, and we've asked for this information, and none of it's come forward. But yet we're sitting here today. Well, Jim, uh, again, let Jim, me finish. No, sir. Yes. No, sir. You, can, you, you think you're a master of our budget. You come and tell us where you think you can put out $2.1 million. You think you're a master of our budget. You say a bunch of lies all over the place. Oh, no, where, where is the $2.1 million? That's wrong. Stop. Stop. That's wrong. The mayor of the city to call the citizen a liar 
In a public forum, I found very unprofessional. Well, thank you. Yes, that's right. Okay. I've given you a minute, sir. You can have one minute. Oh, we waited 20 Thank minutes you. for Jesse. Please. We're moving on. No seats are please. Consideration action to appoint members of the Floresville EDC. Yeah. That's wrong. Yes, go ahead, sir. And the next item 
is the U.S. state funding.
Because if that was the case, if they said, no, you don't have to, the ability to get funding from us, then just go away. We're in that process in that second phase. And in addition to that, Ms. Cindy Nichols, uh, with Mr. Larry Heimer's assistance, got a grant for the water and sewer rate study, which this administration, this office of city manager has been more than willing to provide to the council, but because of the uh, lack of points for a while, we hadn't been able to do that. But that's also part of this funding project. Uh, I want, again, to emphasize that this budget, 2012-2013 budget, will not be affected by debt service or any kind of repayment. If we do get funding and if we do get an accelerated process, which is what we're on, uh, even if we get funding at the end of this year or during this year, the repayment for that bond won't start till the following year, or if we get a deferred for an additional year, it won't uh, take place till then. So there's a lot of requirements that we're doing. But one, our plan is within capacity, nowhere any near, and the 75 rule, Mr. Robles, that just triggers that you need to start planning for funding, planning for uh, the expansion. As long as you're in that, there's no way TCEQ is going to fine you for anything. So that's our main goal. We can be at 100% capacity, and as long as they know that we're working, we'll be fine. Yeah. Fandy, for benefit of some of the members of the audience, when we started talking about the resolution to apply for the USDA loan, can you inform everyone what type of uh, reception you had? I don't care to comment on that, sir. It's just uh, whatever reception I get, good or bad, my job is to do my job, and that's what the Office of the City Manager does along with the staff. And uh, Cindy, I apologize for subjecting you to what's been gone so far. Uh, very good employee, and you continue to do what you need to do. Okay? So. Yes, sir, Mr. Robles. Yes, according to what the City uh, Manager said, I'm just going by what MS survey sure. said. Sure, and that's and that's one of the things. No, 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 and, and that's that's exactly true. True, I'm sorry. And we have to address many things that hadn't been addressed in, in many years before this administration, but now. We're